sometimes I feel like the last man standing. <laughs> but, uh, I know I'm not. I can look at the growing radio audience of this show and know I'm not. We're back here for the uh, second huge half hour of the Patrick Riggin Show here on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Before we get into this little bit I have for this segment, I just want to finish up a thought real quick coming out of that last segment about respecting human rights around the world. The president just this week criticized Russia for coming down on gay people over there. But it seems when it comes to killing people without a trial, that's okay to do. But telling gay people they can't practice their lifestyle in Russia, well, now you've got the president's attention. I guess the difference is the Yemenis or whoever else were killing with drones, those people don't have a lobby in Washington, D.C. I guess they don't contribute to the Democrat campaign coffers. So you Yemenis and alleged and suspected, as they say, terrorists, your families and friends better start sending some money to Washington so the CIA will stop killing your friends and family. You better get some good lobbying representation. Get Hollywood behind you. You do that, and maybe, just maybe, the president will start caring about you, too. <laughs> but anyway, switching gears a little bit, I want to bring the show focus back within our country. Here locally, we've been having some increased gang violence, which, interestingly enough, the police say it's not gang violence. But everyone is trying to find a way to end it, or at least reduce it. The great thing is the solution is easy, quick, and it works any place it's tried. It's legalized drugs. We learned during Prohibition that making alcohol illegal breeds crime and violence. It resulted in huge amounts of money being made by dealing in illegal liquor, so much so that gangs fought over who was going to supply and sell it. Well, surprise, we're seeing this very thing happen in this war on drugs. We have huge amounts of money being made in the drug distribution business, and with that, the resulting gang crime and violence. So what's the problem? Why don't we realize the folly of our ways and learn from history? Learn the lessons from prohibition? Well, it's simple, and the reason is the same reason that's behind most motivations we have in life. Money. Good old money. Let's take a look at the players in this game and, and why they don't want drugs legalized. Well, number one, the most obvious is drug dealers. They're making a lot of money off drugs being illegal from the local dealer on the corner to the person supplying the celebrities and politicians. You know, Drug dealers make a lot of money because their product is in demand and supplies are tight to their illegality. The government doesn't want drugs legal because a lot of agencies get tons of money to spend on the drug war. One of the key ways they make the argument for more money is by citing the drug war and how they're at the forefront of it, how they're fighting to keep your children off of drugs and when that's really your job as parents, how they're fighting this war but have limited amounts of money compared to those big evil drug cartels. The bad guys are outspending the good guys, so the good guys need more money. And that means more taxes in case you didn't get where that's going. <laughs> Other countries don't want them legalized because... They get a lot of money from the United States to use in their own war on drugs. Now, most of that money doesn't go for that. It goes into the pockets of the top government officials and their friends. Oh, sure, a little bit trickles out to the local police to try and keep them off the drug cartel's payroll, but I'm sure that's probably largely ineffective. <laughs> so the solution turns out that we, the United States, send our advisors down there to help out. They bring along helicopters and planes and guns and bombs and operators and all paid for courtesy of the U.S. taxpayer. We get to pay the to police someone else's country. Isn't that great? I'm sure the host country pays some of the bills here and there, but for the most part, it's our party, so we have to pay the bill. There's a lot of interested parties who don't want the drug war to end because there is way too much money in it. The problem with this 
is the American taxpayer is the one getting the shaft. It seems like that's how most things in gov- where the government is involved, that's how most of these things turn out. The American taxpayer is having to pay all this money to fight an unwinnable war because too many people make a whole lot of money off it. Same story in just about every other government program. The beneficiaries get free money. The bureaucrats get easy government jobs, which means money. The government gets more control. But the American taxpayer gets stuck with the bill and having to pay for all this partying, this good time for everyone else. Now people say, but Patrick, we simply cannot allow drugs to be freely available in this country. Everyone will be addicted. When I hear that argument, I always ask, are you going to use drugs? Well, no, of course not, but other people will. First and foremost, what other people do with their lives is none of your business. None at all. I know that's hard for people to hear because they want to butt into other people's lives. Just look at the popularity of reality television shows. You're sitting there watching someone else live their life when you should be out living yours. I'll never understand that. Why sit on the couch watching someone out having fun when you could be out having fun? (laughs) Do you not enjoy life? Do you not have anything in your life that's more entertaining than sitting and watching someone else have fun? Or does it boil down to pure nosiness? I want to know what other people are doing. I have to know what other people are doing. I can't live my life without knowing what other people are doing with theirs. But... (laughs) Anyway, back to my point, if someone else is doing drugs, it's really none of your business. If they aren't infringing on your rights, then leave them alone. Now, if they're a family member or someone you love, you'll try to get them some help. You'll try to help them turn their lives around, but you can't make them do it. People who have successfully completed rehab, they'll all tell you, unless a person wants to change, you aren't going to make any real progress. You can't drag them kicking and screaming if you want it to work. They have to want to quit in their own minds. But, Patrick, these drug-crazed people might try to rob or kill me to get money to support their habit. Well, that's true, but we have laws against theft, assault, and murder. And you're perfectly within your rights to defend your life and the life of those you care about. Besides these, there are drugs available practically everywhere you go, both inside and outside this country. Why aren't there massive lootings and robberies occurring all across America? Why is it most of the crime is in the bad neighborhoods, the poorer neighborhoods? They don't have tons of money, yet that's where the bulk of the crime's being committed. If drug users are so crazed, why aren't they robbing the people with money? Do they not know where they live or something? Doesn't everyone in a city know where the most affluent areas are? Of course they do. So why aren't dr- or doors being kicked in right and left in those areas? That's where the money is. That's where the drug-crazed psychopath should be going to get something valuable they can trade for drugs. And it's not like there's a bunch of police patrolling those areas. It's not really any crime. Most of the police will be in the projects of the poorer parts of town where violence is worse and the crime rate is higher. So what's going on here? Why is it we have drugs available just about anywhere, yet we only have crime in certain areas? Could it be, and I know this is a tough pill to swallow, but could it be you're being deceived? Could it be that a whole lot of people make a whole bunch of money in the war on drugs could it be that by legalizing drugs all of that money will dry up think about that for a minute think about all of the people all of the agencies all the money and control that would be given up if drugs are no longer a legal problem All right, we're up on the last break here on the Patrick Riggins Show. Boy, this hour is just flying by. When we come back, oh, we may hit a little bit more of this drug thing and see what else we can get into before we run out of time here on the show. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. 